Hey guys, Mr. Backward here. In lesson 2.6, we're going to introduce a new type of function called a rational function. In part one, what we're going to do with those rational functions are find their domains, and then we're also going to find things called horizontal and vertical asymptotes based on specific rational functions. So a rational function is defined as a function f of x being equal to n of x over d of x. And the thing with that n and d stuff is both of those things are going to be polynomial functions themselves. So could be any combination of any of those polynomial functions that we've been dealing with so far. They could be linear, they could be quadratic, cubic, really anything is possible as long as it fits into that polynomial category. So we're going to take a look at this example f of x equals 1 over x. And we're first going to look at its domain. And then we're going to look at what our graph is doing or what our function is doing close to those domain issues. So since we're looking at 1 over x, the domain for this one, well, since it's a fractional setup, we just need to make sure that that x value on the bottom isn't 0. Because remember, we can't divide by 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what's happening to this function as our x values get closer and closer to this zero value. And we're going to start by looking at it from the left hand side. So dealing with some negative x values. So what we're going to do is I've got a table of values and we're just going to take each one of these values and replace it in our function for that x value and then see what kind of y value answer we get back or f of x value we get back. So if we were to take negative one and plug it into our function, well, we'd get one over negative one and one divided by negative one is just negative one. If we take negative 0.5 and plug it into our function for x, we're gonna get negative two. If we take negative 0.1 and plug it into our function for x, we're gonna get negative 10. Okay, so these numbers are getting more and more negative. If we take negative 0.001 and plug it in for our x value, we're gonna get negative 1,000. So here's what's happening. As our x value gets closer and closer to zero, okay, we would say as our x value approaches zero from the left hand side, we can see that these values are getting more and more negative. So we could say that our function values are approaching negative infinity. They're getting to be bigger negative numbers. So we've got a little notation that we can use to describe this. We could say as x approaches zero, from the left hand side. Putting this little negative up here just means from the left hand side. Our f of x values, or those y values, are going to approach negative infinity. Well now let's look at what's happening as we approach this x value of zero from the right hand side. And I'm actually gonna work this table right to left because we wanna be getting closer and closer to zero. So I'm gonna start out here at one. If we plug in one for our x value, well we get one over one, and one divided by one is just one. If we plug in 0.5, we're gonna get two. If we plug in 0.1, we get 10. If we plug in 0.001, we get 1,000. So describing this, we would say that as our x value, okay, as our x value approaches zero from the right-hand side this time, putting that little plus sign up there means from the right, that means that our f of x values are approaching positive infinity. So as our x values get closer and closer to zero, these y values or these f of x values keep getting bigger. So it's really easy to see this behavior if we actually look at the graph. So I'm going to start over here on the left hand side. As our x values get closer and closer to zero from the left, we can see that our graph is heading off towards negative infinity. But as we approach zero from the right hand side, so coming in from the right to the left, we can see that our graph is approaching positive infinity. This type of graph is what's known as a hyperbola. And the whole reason we get this shape for our graph is because of having that zero as an undefined value. Earlier we said that zero was not part of the domain of this function. So what's happening is we actually have an imaginary line running through this x value of zero that kind of splits our graph into two pieces. Okay, that's what's called a vertical asymptote. It's a vertical line that splits our graph. So we're gonna run through this next example. I've got f of x equals three x over x minus one. And the first thing we wanna do is find the domain of this function. Since it's a fractional setup, what we need to do is make sure that stuff on bottom, on the denominator, 
isn't zero because we can't divide by zero. So the way we go ahead and do that is we just take the denominator of our function and say it cannot equal zero. Now we're gonna do a little bit of solving just like we would back in algebra one. So I'm gonna add this one over and we get x can't be one. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to test out what's happening around this x value of one. So first we're gonna see what happens as x approaches one from the left hand side. So as x approaches one from the left. And now the easiest way to do this is by just plugging in a couple of test values. So we're gonna to start to the left of one, if we think about a number line, and just get a little bit closer and see what's happening to our function. Zero is to the left of one. So if we plug in zero for our x value, well three times zero is zero, on the bottom we get negative one, zero divided by negative one is just zero. Now we wanna move a little bit closer to one. If we were to plug in 0.5 or a half, we're gonna get back a function value of negative three. So we can see as we move closer to one, our f of x values or our y values are getting negative. So we could say that down here, as our x values approach one from the left hand side, our f of x values are going to approach negative infinity. If we approach that x value of one from the right hand side, so as x approaches one from the right, well again, I'm gonna plug in some test values. Well, two is to the right of one, so if we plug that into our function, we're gonna get back six as an answer. Now we wanna move a little bit closer to one, so maybe we decide to plug in 1.5. Well, when we do that, we're gonna get back nine as an answer. So, as we get closer to one from the right-hand side, our f of x values are going to approach positive infinity. So a couple of quick definitions. The first one is going to be for a vertical asymptote. So it says the line x equals a is gonna be a vertical asymptote for our graph of our function f if our function values approach either positive infinity or negative infinity as our x value approaches whatever our a value was. So in the first example, we were approaching zero. In the last example, we were approaching one. In each of those cases, we approached either positive or negative infinity, depending on which direction we came in from. So that left us with a vertical asymptote, so a line running down our graph that kind of split it into two pieces. Now the other one is going to be a horizontal asymptote. Now what we're gonna look at for our x values is we're gonna approach either x values of infinity or negative infinity. So instead of approaching a specific number, we're just heading either off to the right or off to the left on our graph. If our function values start to approach a specific number, whatever this b value is, we would say that the line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote. So a horizontal asymptote would be a flat horizontal line that kind of splits our picture in two. And it is possible for our graph to have both vertical and horizontal asymptotes going on at the exact same time. Now don't get intimidated by that rational function that's on the screen. It's just a general rational function that we're gonna to use to talk about how we're going to find these different asymptotes. So for vertical asymptotes, what we wanna look at are the zeros of the denominator. So we would just take whatever polynomial function is on the bottom of this fraction, set it equal to zero, and do some solving. Horizontal asymptotes are where things start to get a little bit more involved. There are three different cases that we can have for horizontal asymptotes, and it's all based on what the powers look like. So n is the highest power on top, and m is the highest power on bottom. Well, if that n value is smaller than the m value, so if the power on top is smaller than the power on bottom, then automatically the line y equals zero is gonna be a horizontal asymptote. If those two powers are the same, so if the power on top is the same as the power on bottom, then what we're gonna do is set up a fraction using the leading coefficients. So a sub n is the leading coefficient from our numerator polynomial, and b sub m is the leading coefficient from our denominator polynomial. So we would just set those up as a fraction, y equals a sub n over b sub m. And last case, 
if the n power on top is bigger than the m power on bottom, then we don't have any horizontal asymptotes. I've got three examples on this page that we're going to run through. Feel free to pause the video at any time and try some of these out on your own. So if we look at letter A, our f of x, our function, is going to be 5x squared over x squared minus 1. And the first thing that I'm going to do is find the vertical asymptotes. So in order to find vertical asymptotes, we set the bottom thing equal to 0, and we're going to solve. So I would add this 1 over to the right-hand side. So we've got x squared equals 1. Then I would square root both sides in order to get x all by itself. So we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 1, while the squared 1 is just 1. So we've got two vertical asymptotes, one at x equals positive 1 and one at x equals negative 1. Now, in order to find those horizontal asymptotes, we need to look at the powers. So highest power on top is a 2. Highest power on bottom is also a 2. Since the powers are the same, we're going to set up that fraction using the leading coefficients. So the leading coefficient on top is 5. The leading coefficient on bottom is 1. So the line y equals 5 is going to be a horizontal asymptote. For the next one, there's actually a little bit of simplifying that we can do before we get started. If we were to factor out the top, we'd get x plus 2 and x minus 1. If we factored out the bottom, we'd get x minus 3 and x plus 2. Since there's an x plus 2 on top and bottom, we can actually cancel those things out to simplify our function down a little bit. So we've got x minus 1 and x minus 3. We're not going to worry too much about that factor that we canceled out in this video, but in the next video, I'll show you how we'll deal with those things. But now I want to focus on this x minus 1 over x minus 3. If we look at finding the vertical asymptotes for this one, we would take the bottom and set it equal to 0. So we'd get x equals 3 as our vertical asymptote. Finding the horizontal asymptote. If we look at the highest power on top and the highest power on bottom, they're the same. So what we want to do is set up a fraction with those leading coefficients. Leading coefficient on top is a 1, and leading coefficient on bottom is also a 1. So we've got 1 over 1, which is just 1. So the line y equals 1 is our horizontal asymptote. If we look at our bottom one, if we look at our bottom function, I think we can do a little bit of reducing again. On top, we could factor out a 2 and get x minus 5. On bottom, we could factor that out to get x minus 5 and x plus 3. So we can cancel out those x minus 5s to get 2 over x plus 3. Now, finding the vertical asymptotes. Set the bottom equal to 0, so x plus 3 equals 0. Solve that thing, we get x equals negative 3 as our vertical asymptote. Finding the horizontal asymptotes. Well, if we look at the power on top, there isn't an x on top anymore, so the highest power is 0. If we look at the bottom, the highest power on our x is a 1. Since the highest power on top is smaller than the highest power on bottom, automatically the line y equals 0 is an asymptote. I guess that's it as far as this video goes. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.